If you're watching right now, you are watching Professor Fiske give you a micro lecture on programming in C. And in this micro lecture, we're going to discuss structures. Now, what are structures? What are structures in C and what do they mean? Well, a structure is a user defined data type that is available in C and allows you to combine the uh, different data items of different kinds. And normally we call the structs or structures by a different name and other in other languages, we call them objects. Now, when you declare a structure, it's very important that you understand that a structure operates like a class, even though there are really no classes in C. But please understand that when you declare a structure, you cannot declare the structure in the main. Also understand that a structure has multiple different data items in it. Now, I use the word data item and not variable because variables are a data structure. A structure or a struct is another form of a data structure that allows you to take multiple different types of data and combine them together into the same object. What does that look like? Well, if I say struct and I say um, name, so if I say, yeah, name, and then I did a couple of things, or, or better yet, I said person. Right? What are some of the attributes of a person? Well, they would have a first name. So um, this would be char. Uh, we'll give it the, the good old 50. So this will be first name, 50. Oops. Char, oops. Char last name, 50. Take it again. And then we would say, I don't know, uh, int age. What else? Um, I don't want to get too deep into the weeds on PII and things like that. Uh, I think age is good. Um, what else? What else is important to a person? And when you say, when I say person, I mean person from the perspective of like an employee or someone who would work at an organization, right? What's important to us and them? I guess tenure. So um, tenure. Okay, cool, that's good enough. So now let's see if we can use some of these struct-like things. So if I wanted, okay, to use the struct, so this is more or less just a um, blueprint of how I want the data to be structured, right? So because this is a blueprint of how I want the data to be structured, Oh yeah, the light's actually pretty important. Um, then what I would actually do is I would do the following. So instead of all of this, I would say, well, I would like to front load this struct, right? Struct, and then I would say person, because that's the struct type I would like to use. And then I would say student, okay? And then from there, I would give it some data. Right? And I don't like putting things on the same line like this, so I'm going to not do that. And then I would literally just put the data directly into this specific object as such. So first name would be John. Uh, I was going to put Jingleheimer Smith, but I think that's a little too far. So I'll also say Smith. And you notice it's giving me the information that I need, right? It's saying, hey, this person structure has four properties. Those four properties have these specific data types and these specific data type names. So in this case, I can say his age is 52 and his tenure at the university is 15 years. Fantastic. If I want to see, so I want, if I want to see, the data that's in this struct, then what I would need to do is print out. It, it gets no simpler than that. And I can say, and I can start, you know, forming the data in a way that makes sense. So structure data, and then give it a new line, right? And then from there, I can say uh, first name, um, and then first name would have a string, Last name, and for now, we're going to put the console beneath, beneath us. So we'll say last name. I really don't like doing it this way. I, I think I can continue to make this work by being 
on this different lines. I like it this way. It's easier to read, in my opinion. Can I do this? Missing terminating character. How do I do? Oh, I guess I have to do that and that. That's annoying. Maybe I don't have to do that. Oh, that's very nice. All right, I learned something new today. Um, cool. So that. So I guess I can't put that back on the other side if this works. And it's last words again. Last name. We'll say H, which is an integer. We'll say D for now. I think D's fine. Yeah, D's fine. And then new line. And then lastly, tenure. Done and dusted. So now that we have that, we'll put the console back on the right hand side because I like to have the long screen. The last thing I'm going to do, why is this angry? Oh, it wants a thing. There we go. So now that I'm printing all of what's in this specific struct, now I have to give it all the parameters that I haven't given it yet. So the first parameter is the first name, right? Because first name has that percent sign as format specifier, so it's going to be looking for the string. And so I will provide that string. The string will be coming from the student struct. We will be using dot notation to get that data out. And it will look like this. Student dot. Notice what it just did. It gave me all the properties that are in that struct. Amazing. What I actually want to do is I want to print this person's information as such. age it's almost like it knows what I want ten done and dusted I will move this over a bit because I like formatting I like my my stuff to be formatted and let's see what happens this should print just fine and there you go I don't like that this is at the end like that so we're just going to change it up a bit I don't want these commas commas are not necessary run it again and there you go. This is the structured data. First name's John, last name is Smith. Age is 52, tenure is 15 years. We can save years here if you wanted. Run that, and now it's fixed. If I was a smart cookie, I would new line this one so it looked a little nicer, or I would do something like this, right? So it looks a little nicer, a little cleaner, and then run it, and there you go. And there you don't go. Huh. Let's clean this. Can I get rid of all of these guys? I would like to clean the console, please. Clear history. Run. And one shot, baby. It was only one shot. I, I, it was like this the whole time. All right, great. So <laughs> um, your struct works a lot like an array. But the difference between an array and a struct is your arrays don't have real keys, right? Real keys that are associated with the values that are that are applied to it. What a struct is, at its lowest form, is an array with key value pairs, okay? That is what a struct is. Now there's so much we can do with this. You can take structs and you can store many different structs in one array. Loop through, through the array when you wanna get data out. You can store data from a database uh, or you can read data from a file or database into a struct, right? You can have a struct like this that's built like an object for a specific thing, an entity, if you will. And then you have multiple entities for multiple things. So if you had multiple students at your university or your, your, your institution of higher learning, then what you would do is you would go to the database, you would read the contents of that database out, and then you would dump that data one by one into each student struct automatically using a for loop because you're not bad. And then you would take all of those and put that into an array. And then you can use that array whenever you want to get the data that you want. You can filter that array if you wanted to, to remove the data. You don't want things like that. Like let's say you only want students that have, you know, tenure higher than 14 years. Well, then when you loop through the data coming out of the database, you can say, well, if the tenure is not higher than 14 years, I don't want that. I don't want that person. Okay, great. Um, this is what a struct looks like. One of the things about structs that are really nice is because is, is that structs have been carried forward in uh, computer science into C++, C Sharp, and Java within, in the form of objects. So we call structs objects now, and they're very easy, nice to use. 
Um, normally those objects can be um, declared and then instantiated later. So that's a little bit about what I wanted to talk to with relation to structs. In our next micro lecture, we're going to talk about unions. Please like and subscribe. It does wonders to let me know what content you're interested in. And as I say in all of my videos, good luck, have fun, ciao.